<laughs> Happy Halloween, and yes, we are back with a video. I do apologize. It has been some time since our last video. Uh, we do try to keep up with the videos, and I am going to go on a video binge this weekend and try to get a lot of videos in the can for everyone so we can have a more regular schedule. Uh, it's a big day for us here at Information First. Not only is this a video, first video in a long time, we're also getting ready to launch, wait for it, our new virtual course offering. So we will have virtual courses in Content Manager and Control Point, and we guarantee to run them with even as little as one person. So uh, subscribe to us, follow us on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. We're going to start a heavy campaign to get the awareness out there. Spread the word to your friends and family, whoever may want to come to Content Manager or Control Point Training, and sign up, and we'll get that to you. Our first one, we are expecting to be the first or second week in December, and then we will try to have a more regular uh, schedule uh, about every maybe eight weeks or so from there. But that's great. We're pretty excited. And uh, if you like kind of the quality of these videos, then it only gets better in the classroom. Okay, uh, today's video is going to be 9.3. So we're going to do a video today on 9.3, and we're also going to do a video later today on control points. So watch our YouTube feed for that as well. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see what we're going to go through today. The first thing you're going to do is we're going to look at the web client and the changes. So there is a color uh, colorization of the client, flatlined it to a nice royal blue for microfocus. It's also the same kind of layout and, and uh, overview that Control Point 5.6 as well has as well. Uh, other things we're going to look at, I'm just looking around my screen here. Um, sorry, <laughs> everything in you own in a box to the right, actually. It's going to be the metadata panel can now be pushed to the right. I do like that. While we're in the desktop client, we're going to get some other bulk changes you can do s around as things such as title uh, amendment, record number changes, location management, uh, fun stuff like that. Renumbering. Um, remember you had those uh, documents that were based on container numbering and you move them or somebody misfiled it and you had to move it to another container and the record number still reflected the mistake. Well, that's been changed now. The record number can be updated, so it's kind of cool. And finally, some of you might be interested in the search audit ability. So without any further ado, let's jump into our class. All right, here we go. Let's start with the web client. Let me get that on the main screen. All right, so the first thing you'll notice, yes, the colorization has been flattened. It is just a blue. Uh, it doesn't have all those uh, multiple colors that we had in the earlier client. The black is gone. I really like that, that the black is gone. Um, it just had a high contrast. I do like the new web client. Iconology is gone. So you had that search uh, form button. You had the search uh, editor button. Those are gone. They've been flattened. So when you want to search now, you simply click the search editor like that. Type whatever method you're looking for. In this case, I might be doing a title word search. Enter the criteria I want, and I'm going to search for my favorite Australian animal, the dugong. Click off that search, and there we go. Uh, a couple things you'll notice. Now, these aren't all 9.3 things. Some of them are improvements from 9.2, that being the nesting of a container. That's kind of cool. You can open this up. No more. Or gone are the days where you have to right-click navigate to contained record or to container record. So this is cool. You might also notice as I scroll through here, the iconology is reflective of the extension, i.e., or that is to say, PDF is shown, Word documents are shown here, TIFFs, etc. So you can visually see. As a matter of fact, that also replaces the paperclip. If you see a application icon, then you, you pretty much know, hey, it's got an electronic record. If you don't, then you're looking at a metadata label. I don't have any here in my view that I can show you, but that being said, if I want to view my TIFF, I just simply click on it and I'm taken to the viewer. Nice full page viewer, close it in the left, in the top right, I should say. So I like all that stuff. Uh, let me do a, uh, let me go home for a second. Let me do a title word search for my other favorite Australian animal, a manatee. Or is that an American animal? I don't know. They're related, though. That's all that's important. Uh, when you do this now, notice what's happening. We're getting tabbed views. Yay! Just like the web client. Oh, sorry. I said that wrong. Just like the desktop client. So now you get this tabbed view. You can go back in time and see your previous day's searches. So I do like things like that. Other than that, most of it is the same. We've got our user options on the right. We've got our help button. Uh, they have moved that little window that talked about who you were. Uh, now you click on it, and you can see who you're logged in as, what server you're hitting, and what your user role is. So that's that's the same information. It's just been moved. 
Uh, down the left-hand navigational panel, we still got our records, the ability to create new ones, our favorite records, and all that. We got the secondary panel, which pops up. That's all the same. Requests, locations, and other things. So not much has changed in terms of the availability. Color has been flattened, and I really like and dig this new color scheme. Uh, let me jump back to home for a moment here in my favorite records. Let me click on my document to edit. Doesn't matter which one I grab. It's coming down here. Uh, let's look at the properties. So I can open up that window. Remember, we had that one. What I like about this is it fits better. It compresses the main screen. You've got your property view on the right. Everything you own on a panel to the right, just like I said with respect to the desktop client. So speaking of the desktop, and on that note, let me jump down to the desktop client. So, oh, you know what I'm going to do too? Let's go full screen and get a better view of what's happening here. Uh, minimize the web client like that, and let's open up the desktop client. So back to my title word search for Dugong. I'm going to execute that search, and what we get is what everybody for the last 15 years or more has seen, view pane on the bottom, list pane on the top, and we had uh, no ability to change that. But with the web client, everything's on the right. So what I'm going to do is go to my view tab, select my view pane option. I'm going to select right. I'm just going to simply close this down. Now I'm going to re-execute my search. And look at that. I have it on the right. Now a lot of people like this. If you are a person who will be reading your or previewing your stuff, if I click on this and then I go to the preview tab, now that is off screen. I'm sorry about that. Actually, I'll show you what I'm doing exactly. I'll try to bring it all up into screen. Um, I'm trying to get you the maximum resolution that I can. There we go. So that's what it looks like at the bottom. Uh, when I click on that preview screen, now I get a nice full page view of whatever was in that attachment. So that's a lot easier for people to view and uh, access as opposed to it being down below. So this is getting and winning grave reviews internally. We do like this, this view pane. Some of us, admittedly, it's taken a while to get used to, but after working with it for a little bit, uh, it certainly is a nice way to go. And let me just minimize that so we can see. Other than that, your tabs and everything are the same. All right, what else did I have on the agenda today? We were going to look at the new kind of bulk renaming that you can do. Uh, let me open up a search. So I'm going to kick off my Dugong search one more time. Ah, there's really no need. There we go. All right, let's say I want to amend a few things. So I want to amend my titles. What I can do is grab three of these records. I'm just going to append it with, with Halloween. So I'm going to go into my details. I'm going to go to my title. You get this nice little box. We're all familiar with this. All tagged rows are the one you right clicked on. So I'm going to say all my tagged rows. And now you can see this is a little bit of a dialogue. gives you a little bit of functionality. I'm going to change the text. I'm not going to change it to anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to append, prepend or append. That's an interesting, let's do uh, October 2018 with a hyphen. Whoops, that's an equal sign. With a hyphen. And I'm going to click OK. It's going to go through the standard, are you sure you want to do each record? Yes, or at least this record, this record, this record. And you can see now my title has a nice amendment with October 2018. So that's kind of cool. I do like that feature. Other things you can do. Uh, let's say you accidentally set up your best friend as an organization or vice versa. You set up your best organization as something else what we can do now is change so let me pick on somebody here uh, I'll do a Medusa on to Peter Rabbit I don't want to pick on Peter Rabbit but what you can do with a user account let me just right click I did that wrong is you do have the ability now to change user location type uh, why would you want to do this if you made a mistake setting it up which has happened once in a while uh, accidentally grabbing a, a wrong type no worries, just change the type of, of from organization, say, to person, if that's what you did. You can also change the status, and you can do this on bulk. So again, if I grab multiple users, change location type, all tagged rows, I can make them all internal or external relative to what they already are. So there are some neat features like that where you can move things and manipulate things en masse. Uh, this could possibly be hap uh, helpful if somebody mis misfiled an unknown location. So there is some maintenance you can do there. Label management. User labels. How many out there? I need a shout out for how many people like user labels. Ah, 
good. All right. So let's see what the user labels can do now. Uh, one thing in particular that we can do with user labels is you can drag and drop. So let's say that dugongs, there, see my interests are dugongs and manatees. Let's say now I want to make a project. I want to devote my life's work to dugongs. So I'm just going to move this into one of my research projects, move under the user label, and now dugongs are in my research labels. So that's nice, that drag and drop, drag and drop functionality. Uh, renumbering. Ah, oh, this is kind of a cool one. So yes, you can renumber records. Let me go to another search. You can easily renumber, which is uh, kind of cool. But what I wanted to show you was, there's the record number, which is what we're used to. But I want to focus on renumbering a container-based record number. So ahead of time, like a cooking show, I created a document type that is numbering pattern based on container, which means it's going to uh, inherit the first couple of digits of that container and amend it. So let's go ahead and create one of those records. As a matter of fact, you know what? Before I do that, I have too many windows open. I'm going to close them all down. Look at that flash. All right. I'm going to go home, go to new record, get to go to my container, and I'm going to say this is new video demo is the name of the folder, and I'm going to put it in 18.6. So the container number is 18.6. I'm going to click OK. Now, oh, data validation. I meant to show you this one. That's interesting. But I'll talk about this in a moment. For now, I'm just going to say OK. Now, I've got my record number here corrected 18.6-02. That is the record number of the one I just created. But I accidentally put that into the wrong container got a couple of ways of doing it. What I'm going to do is amend the property. So remember, keep in mind the record number is 18.6-2. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to its locations container and I'm going to now put it in a different container. Maybe I'm going to put this in 18.3. Click OK. Look at that. Number gets updated. The record number is now 18-3-01. So that is awesome for those of you who have container-based numbering and you accidentally misfile, easily put it back in. Uh, the first one I created, you notice it was given a different number, number two. Uh, there was probably either a number one already there or number one has already been used. So what I have found in my experiments is if you move it out and back and out and back, you're actually using numbers. So if you move it in and it becomes number four, take it out, bring it in later and it becomes number five, a new record in there will become number six. It won't go back and reuse numbers that are no longer in play. So keep that in mind if number sequence is important to you. Uh, a little bonus on the video that I didn't uh, put in the title was this data validation. I was just playing with this. I meant to, uh, I might do this on another one. This did come into the product before 9.3, but it is kind of interesting. Uh, all I did was I just made a little data validation rule here that says, hey, um, if someone is, is registering an expense and it's less than $5, uh, they don't need, just warn them they don't need to log an expense report. That was the scenario that I made up. So let's see that in play. I'll go back to my home and I'll create a new record here. I actually put it on a different record type, um, but I, because I copied it, uh, it didn't matter. So I'm going to go here. Now notice we have our cost value down here. That's the data validation rule that I created that said, hey, if this is less than $5, just give them a warning. So I'm going to do an expensive meal. If I can spell it right, this is my expensive meal. And this was, we'll say, $50. And I'm going to click OK. Container cannot be left blank. That's OK make those mistakes all the time. Let me put that in this one. There we go. 18.5. Click OK. No issues. The expense went in. Let me go through that scenario one more time. And I'll grab my record type. And this will be a, I don't want to give a plug to a McDonald's or a fast food restaurant, so I'm going to say a cheap meal. Cheap meal. Certainly wasn't Starbucks. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. And now I'm going to go down to the another folder. I even put a different folder. It doesn't matter. And this was only a $3 meal. Put in my $3. Click OK. And up comes the data validation rule. It says, hey, receipts are not required under $5. Now, this is a warning. You could do a prevent. You could do a couple other things. But things like that and discussions are available in our new training courses that I talked about at the top of the video. So don't forget, we will have training courses and we can take this stuff that you're seeing now and go much, much deeper. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you as I've been doing all these different searches and I've already again set this up before the video and that was to look at the audit log and in particular to see all of the searches. So, oh, see, now sometimes this little view can maybe get annoying, uh, but let me just see if I can resize it a little bit over here. 
And I'm going to scroll down to my searches. Okay, well, let me see. I got to find I know I had searches executed. I don't think I turned that feature off. Uh, there it is, right there. So there's an example of a search being executed at 1019 when the, this, ever this video was done. So let me do another, another video here, or sorry, another, Paul, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me do another search. Now I've done a search for dugong. I'll do a search for manatee. And what else can I do a search for? Uh, let's do authority, because, you know, we all play in the demo DB. Lots of videos coming up. So I've done three, executed three searches. Now I'm going to go back to my online audit log, and sure enough, there they are. Now let me just kind of bring this over a little bit. And you can see that search was executed, title the authority, here's my manatee search, and here's my dugong search. So this is kind of cool for any of you records managers that want to know what people are searching for. That is now audited, especially if they're searching for things they shouldn't be. Anyways, thanks for tuning in on this video. Let me go to my end cap screen while I talk. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is the first of what I promise will be lots more videos. And um, coming soon, or maybe later today, a control point video. So on the left, you'll see playlist for um, other videos. And on the right, you will see the most recent video we uploaded. So again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And thanks for tuning in. Have a happy Halloween. And hopefully we'll see you in one of our training classes soon. Thanks. Bye.